Good morning, brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Hello. <laughs> the video that we are about to embark upon is not the video that um, I had thought was going to be done today. I got the notes for that already, the notes that the Lord gave me. Um, that may still be coming, but this, um, this video is different. This video is different. This video is based upon certain events which I will not bring to public light. But it's a meat video, I think. And this is what the Lord would have me to do. I, I am here because this is what the Lord wants me to do. This is what the Lord would have me to do. The Lord is the one who put me here. The Lord is the one who gives me what to speak unto you. I make mistakes, yes. Of course I do. But it's a dependency upon the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This has nothing to do with me. Okay, this is not a one-man show. It is of the Lord. This is the Lord's ministry, not mine. And all glory and praise and credit goes on to Him. If anything derived from anything that you see that is beneficial unto you comes from the Lord, not from me. Because there is none good, no, no, not one. There is only one good, and that is who? God. And who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? David said that of the Lord. It's like, oh, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man but dust and ashes? Right? Turn in your authorized, please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 16. I shared some of these verses with a friend today. With a friend. <laughs> a friend who, as a friend, I say, you need to be careful to onto whom you listen to. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 13. On to verse 20. Verses 15, uh, excuse me, verses 13 on to verse 20 in Matthew chapter 16. Please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now, this is, from verse 13 on to verse 15, is a go-to portion for, in Scripture for those Christians who want to prove relativism. What is relativism? Relativism means truth is relative unto the person's spirit, soul, and body, point of view. So what is truth unto me might not be truth unto you. 
That is relativism. And what these satanic Christians today, uh, especially those that are in the church buildings, it's 9.48 a.m. my time right here, right now, okay? What they're right now in their church buildings teaching onto these poor people that are going to these church buildings, okay? We, we don't got time for drama, brethren. We got a battle we need to wage war against through the Lord, okay? But this is a go-to portion of Scripture for those who like to say that the Scripture teaches relativism. Because Jesus in verse 13, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Why is the Lord concerned what people think about him? Number one, he is God. He is the Father. Number two, who is he addressing? Jews. Remember the rich young ruler? He says, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, like, man, who you, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Uh, the, uh, the rich young ruler didn't see or realize that he was talking to God the Father. He only saw a guy who could... Uh, give him things to make his life better down here on earth. You know, your best life now. But then the blind guy, when he heard that Jesus was coming, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And when Jesus heard that, he stopped. He stopped. And they brought him hither. And then Jesus says, uh, says to him, oh, what do you want me to do for you? I'm brad this, by the way. And the blind guy said, um, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus gave him his sight. To contrast, one went to Jesus because they, he only saw a man. Uh, what does it say? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. That Jesus was a guy who could go to God for you to make your life better. That's very similar in reasoning as to the satanic trinity, which demotes Jesus and makes him number two of a three-person, satanic, wicked, blasphemous, Catholic trinity. Okay? Didn't know that because he didn't have eyes to see. Didn't know he was speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And then Jesus says, And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Those who were following him. Look at what Peter says. Then Shimon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Anointed One. You are God. This does not teach relativism, by the way. Truth is not relative to your interpretation. Truth is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? This is not teaching relativism. What this is showing is people, the difference between people who only see a good teacher or maybe even a prophet, rather onto those who see and know that he is God, our Father. Prove that to you. Okay? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Shimon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Flesh and blood. See, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Okay? Flesh and blood. What man teaches you, like Catholics. But my Father which is in heaven. Verse 16. And Shimon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is not teaching relativism. This is showing us the contrast between those who see with eyes of flesh whose God is the wafer cookie. Okay? And those who know the truth. Those who have eyes to see. 
who worship the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This does not teach relativism. Had to address that first. Let's continue. And I say unto thee, <laughs> O you wicked Catholics, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, a small stone. What is it? Petra? I get them mixed up. Petros and Petra. One is a rock and one is a small stone. You know, Greek. Queen, Greek. Okay? I get them mixed up. It's not important. But, for thou art Peter, a small stone. And upon this rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now the Catholic comes to this. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the Catholic comes to this and says, this is where Jesus made Peter the, the first pope. Well, the gates of hell have prevailed against the Catholic Church, because it's Satan's church. So, uh, uh, there you go. There you go. Remember in Matthew chapter 7, where our Lord says about those who build their house upon a rock, and the winds blow, and it won't fall down? Brad Ising again. And then those who build their house upon sand, and the winds blow, and great is the fall of it. Like I told you before, you look, sand, look at sand uh, under a microscope. You can look at images on Google. Um, sand is comprised of what? A bunch of little small stones. Yeah. Exactly. A grain of sand. Little small stone. And upon this rock himself, why isn't it capital R? I don't know. But this I do know. That our Lord Jesus Christ is referring to unto himself. <laughs> not to Peter as the foundation <laughs> because Paul even says no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid which is Christ Jesus <laughs> you know it's, that's not funny but anyone who reads the scriptures who has the spirit of God in them you know the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father has that spirit you know and it's, uh, has that circumcision made without hands Anyone saved reads this and be like, well, of course, Jesus is talking about himself. But someone who is lost, trying to understand scripture, or trying to teach people something contrary to scripture, yeah. You believe this because you believe that um, Peter is the first pope because you want to. Because you give more precedent upon men and what they think. Let's continue. And I will give unto thee the keys <laughs> to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm sorry. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, Peter the fir first pope and bound or loose in heaven. I have two videos uh, that the Lord gave me where we address <laughs> verse 19, okay? So, uh, if I remember, I'll link them, okay? Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Why? Didn't Jesus' own brother say unto him, because yes, Jesus had half-brothers, okay? Mary had other children, you wicked Catholics, okay? Your, your Jesuit priests are lying to you, okay? But why would he say that? To tell no man else that he was Christ. Why? Because of verse 17. Blessed art thou, Shimon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven that is revealed unto you by spirit rather than man. Now God will use man to show things unto you, the things of the Spirit. Absolutely! Amen, amen, amen. But you also got to remember, 
This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Doctrinally, still under the Old Testament, still under the law. He was speaking to the Jews. Okay? You gotta remember that. That's why he did that's why he said, Don't don't say anything. Why? Because the Father was on earth in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Soul, God the Father, Body, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You get it? One God, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Not one God comprised of three persons, and a person is a Spirit, Soul, and Body. Okay? Because He was there offering the Kingdom of Heaven unto the Jews. The Jews should have known that with the Father right there. See? So, don't you say anything. The Father is going to reveal it unto them. Jesus, who the Father is, um, is going to reveal it. It's like, don't say anything. Because He was with them. See? You get it? You get that? Okay? So, remember, this is not talking about relativism. That's a... You know, if you've ever dealt with any of these... Uh, uh, Christians who are relativists, you know, well, that's not how I see truth. You may see truth another way, but that's not how I see That's nonsense. Truth is truth. Okay? Truth is truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever is our Lord Jesus Christ. Truth is truth. It's not relative to your perception. That's Satanism. Okay? It should be as God. Because God's. Because remember, the tree in the garden, the fruit was good looking, and one to make one wise. Yeah. I I I me me me. Thank you for that rebuke, by the way. Dearly, dearly beloved sister. Thank you. So, again, this is not talking about relativism. Go to Matthew chapter 13 now, <coughs> verses 45 on to verse 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found at one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, in context, he is talking about the obvious, literal, physical kingdom of heaven, which is in Jerusalem, which our Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes down back at his second coming with us, his church, the church of the living God, going to rule and reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But, pearl of great price. Why is that a pearl of great price? Uh, go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. The Lord didn't give me this when I sent that to you, dear friend. Okay? This came after. Just so you know. Okay? Have to cover all bases. Okay? Luke 14. Verse 33. Ah. Let's begin at verse 25 on to verse 33. Okay? Luke twen uh, 14, verses 25 on to verse 33. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, Pearl of great price. If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Sell all that you have for that pearl of great price. You know, Paul considered everything as dung, so that he could win Christ. Not that he was working to earn his salvation or to stay saved. No. No. But 
to follow our Lord Jesus Christ as Paul followed our Lord Jesus Christ, our example unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Paul is the apostle unto the Gentile, okay? You have to, it costs you everything. It costs you everything, okay? And that's more important. That's more important than what a man thinks of you. Let's continue. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Why? Because maybe the, found, uh, the house was built on sand and not a rock. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish it. To finish, excuse me. Well, what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Find a pearl of great price, you forsake everything so that you can get that. And it's not that, that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's something that you do yourself. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, his requirement for day for today in this dispensation is brokenness of your self-righteousness. Sorrow, contrition for your sins that you committed against him. It's your fault. And that ought to produce in you the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord. You're going to call out upon him. You're going to call upon the name of the Lord. And may he save you. It's simple. It really is. But see, it costs you everything. It's very costly. It's simple. But it costs you. If you're not willing to give up that... And if you're not also willing to give up man's opinion, <laughs> beloved, okay? Proverbs, more on this. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 1, just one verse. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Remember how it says in the book of Hebrews, I don't have this down on in my notes, where um, our Lord says that Moses esteemed the riches in Christ better than all the treasures in Egypt. The world. A good name is rather to be chosen. What does the Lord think of you? What does the Lord think of you? Oh, God knows you're hot. Oh, shut up. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And he knows that it's desperately wicked. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. Look those up. Okay? Go to Job. Job 28. Job 28. Uh, 
on to the close of the chapter. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Uh, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The deep saith, it is not in me. And the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. Priceless. Priceless. Wisdom is priceless. What's wisdom? Ha ha! We'll get there. Hold on. This is good. This is beautiful. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I lost my place. Okay, verse 19. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Ethiopia. Of the land of Ham. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold, like the gold of Ophir. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living, and kept close from the fowls of the air. Remember the parable of the seeds and the sower? Follow the air, pick it up, and put it wherever they, they, they drop it or something like that. And also there again in verse 21, Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And the natural man cannot receive the spirit of the things of the Spirit of the Lord, for they are foolishness unto them, because they are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Destruction and death say, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Verses 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. We took the name, but not having the power of God. Look at, the, look at these Christians, especially the ones in the buildings. They're, they're doing their tithing, or they might help out a homeless guy with a couple of bucks. They might even pray for some people. They might even have enough to go to Jerusalem and plant a tree at the Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And 
never knew you. Now God knows who every single person is. God knows everybody's hearts. Yes, he does. But the knowing there is an intimate relationship, a personal relationship with God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, prayer is a monologue, not a dialogue. You know that, right? You know that, right? What does the Lord think of you? That is more to be concerned about than anything that man thinks of you. I'm sure. And Luke chapter 13, again. Did we already go to Luke 13? No, we did not. Luke 13, excuse me. Luke 13. My fingers will get us there. Luke 13. Verses 24. On to verse 30. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know ye not whence ye are. Jesus Christ is the door. John chapter 10. You read that on your own time. If anyone doesn't go through the door, our Lord Jesus Christ, but goeth up some other way, they are a thief and a robber. And when the door is shut, uh, when the church of the living God is caught up, redeemed, resurrected, people are going to be saying, Lord, Lord. By then it's too late. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. We, we were with you. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. What does God think of you? Does God know you? Yes, he knows everybody, yes. Does he, do you have a monologue, a relationship with the living God? Do you? How do you know? How do you know? Who cares what a man thinks of you? Yes, a good name is better to be chosen rather than silver. Yes, yes. Yes, and the way we serve our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, reflects Him. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And there's a time and a place for everything. For everything. There is. But when one, all they do in everything is seek to find fault in everything they do they seek first to find fault they accomplish a diligent search so that they may say aha what is man that thou art mindful of him verse 28 there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last. Referencing unto those Jews who are going to be saved during the time. Matthew chapter 11. Oops. Matthew chapter 11. Verses 28 on to verse 30. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, not from me. Yes, you will learn from Lord, from our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the comforter. He is the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. Yes, but we are to learn of him. What does that mean? Get to know him personally. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many of you out there who truly think you are think you are saved, but when we get caught up, you're going to be left behind? How many of you out there are saved by what you do, what you've done, because you merely believe and haven't come to the Lord on His terms? Time is so short. Time is so short. Does the Lord know you through a personal relationship? Have you come to Him on His terms? Because, people, if you are one of these who saved yourself by your mere belief, you just believe, you're a thief and a robber. Learn of Him. It's a personal, it's a relationship, it's a it's a monologue. It's not a dialogue. Please. Because once the door is shut, once the door is shut, how many of you are going to be left behind saying, Lord, Lord? Well, like I've said in a previous video, um, that I, I'm persuaded that a lot of those who get killed during the time of Jacob's trouble in the initial first part of it are those who were left behind thinking they were saved. These poor, easy believism people who have been duped by so many of these false prophets on YouTube and on other platforms that you, you save yourself by your own belief. It doesn't have to be like this. See? You have to come to Him on His terms, not your own. You're not going through the door when you save yourself by your own belief. You can lead the horse to water. But you can't make the horse drink it. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on the verse 11. Learn of me, he said. Take my yoke upon you. If there be therefore... Uh, Philippians 2, verses 1 on verse 11. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies... Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, there are those of the Church of the Living God, we can, dis we can disagree with each other. But at the de end of the day, if they are truly your brother or sister, regardless of how you feel about them, okay? That is your brother. That is your sister. Okay? A like mind. And I've experienced much like-mindedness with many of the brethren, especially those whom uh, we have been given the privilege to fellowship with. Okay? A like-mindedness. Why? Because we have the same spirit. Why is it that so many seem to depart? Could it be that maybe you think you're the only one who, like Elijah did, who is saved? Mm. Good luck with that. Now, granted, 
course, we of the Church of the Living God are very minuscule, very small. I scarcely believe that when the catching away um, happens, out of the mass population which the Jesuits are seeking to uh, 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 reduce, you know, uh, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. See that? <laughs> Sorry. Should have wore this in the previous video. But anyway, I scarcely believe that even a million today out of the dense population on earth, I scarcely believe a million will be caught up. I scarcely believe that. <laughs> At the rate this is going, uh, with the falling away, not maybe under half a million? I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And the symptom of the sin of pride is when you forget that you are dirt. And then you need to remind others via reminding yourself of what good you have done. It's a symptom of pride. I have a pride problem. I battle with my pride daily. And guess what? I don't always win. But when I let my pride get the best of me, the Lord reminds me. You know, Brad, for a while you've been asking brethren for the pray for you for humility. You didn't mind your eating? You didn't mind what poison you put in your body? Okay. Here's, here you go. And again, when you face death, that kind of changes you. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We are to serve others. We are to serve others. Yes. Not be self-centered, but centered on our Lord Jesus Christ. Who washed the feet of stinking feet of fishermen. God the Father. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself God the Father was born in the flesh wow and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Luke 16. Luke 16. You know, brethren, people, you, you will reach a point, take the part, you will reach a point where you will really not care what men think of you. You really will. And it's, remember, the way you and I as the Church of the Living God serve our Lord, reflect upon our Lord. That's why we need to align our lives with the Scriptures. Okay? You have to remember that. But if you are constantly weighing 
things in the court of public opinion, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to put a yoke around your neck that is not supposed to be there. <laughs> uh, my, my dear, dear friend from England, he's, he's done everything he could to try to, de, uh, to destroy my so-called reputation. And another is seeking to take his place. That's how it works. Uh, you know, coadjutors. You know, discredit. But I'm still alive to that. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father, rebuke me sharply. There will come a time. Guess what? That comes with, get ready for this, patience. Oh. Oh. That comes with patience. You're not going to get it like that. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, warns us about this. In context, verses 13 and 15. No servant can two serve masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, mammon money or the things of the world lost man is of the world flesh dirt is of the world and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him and he said unto them ye are they which justify yourselves before men but God knoweth your hearts sure does for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Oh, to be called rabbi, rabbi. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Verses 41 under verse 47. I receive not honor from men. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Remember the uh, uh, woman, uh, the Syrophrenian? I just butchered that. That one woman who uh, came to her, Lord, heal my daughter. And she said, Call them son of David. Uh, son of David is what a Jew says unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Jew is the one who is to refer unto him as son of David. Okay? That's why Jesus ignored her. He was taking into her, on, upon her, not being a Jew, not being a Hebrew, thank you, um, something that was there just for the Hebrew, the Jew. Okay? But, I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Jehovah saves the anointed one, Jesus Christ. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now verse 33 is clearly making reference Onto the abomination that maketh desolate that man of sin, the son of perdition. Obviously. But, but for our instruction in righteousness, hold your place here. Go to 2 Corinthians. You're going to notice uh, quite a few uh, times now in, second, in the book of Corinthians. Why? I'll let you figure that out. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 19 and 20. 2 Corinthians, excuse me. <laughs> 2 Corinthians, chapter 11. Verses 19 on to verse 20. For ye suffer fools gladly, 
seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. If a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, someone lord, lording themselves over you, you know, someone whom you look to and cling to, who is not the Lord Jesus Christ, beware the worship of men. And also, third John, <laughs> Third John, chapter nine. Uh, third John, verses nine and ten. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes or Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Want to be a hot shot? want to be the one who's in charge. Huh? Want to sit there on a throne pointing out this, this, and this. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Whoever it is whom you're putting on a pedestal, if he has spoken, thus it is, right? I don't, I, I don't understand that. I get it, but I don't understand it. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Back to uh, John chapter 5. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? It should make a hill of beans difference to you what I personally think of you. Now, amongst brethren, I love my brethren. They are my brethren and my sisters. I love them. Yes. And let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. Yes. Yes. But when you are starting to put what man thinks above you, man, uh, what man thinks of you, rather than what the Lord thinks of you, that's a problem. That's a problem. And you, you'll get to that point where, psh, whatever. You will get to that point. And it's not an arrogant flippancy. It's nothing like that. Because again, the way we serve the Lord reflects Him. That's why you need to examine yourself every single day. And when the Lord shows you stuff, you need to repent of it. And until He shows you something or gives you a check, you are have to you are you know not leaning on your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path if he doesn't correct you or there's no chastening it's something that is from him continue on there but when you start valuing what men think of you more than what the Lord thinks of you that's a problem that's a problem. I, 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 I would never, ever be so concerned as to ask some, what do you think of me? But see, while one did that in innocency, the guys that that was asked in, while in innocency, was a snare. 
I know that. I know that. The question itself was asked in innocency. And the one who did the asking, fine. But the one that led that onto you. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? John chapter 12, verses 37 on to verse 43. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. And these things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. God is a far more effective witness than man. And I have learned over the years when there are those who are in error, one of the best ways to handle it, Lord, I put this upon you. Lord, if you would have me to say something, leave me, guide me. If not, Lord, give it unto the Lord. Let him deal with them. And as we have all seen, that works, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. First Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four. Verses one under verse seven. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. What does this mean? Paul is not judging his own self by his own dictate, by what he thinks is good. Because when you read in Romans chapter 7, he says that I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And you and I daily are fighting fle uh, spirit with flesh every single day. Okay? For I know, verse 4, For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Examine yourselves. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Whether ye be in the faith? I just brad eyes that, excuse me. But he that judgeth me, judgeth me is the Lord. How is he going to judge you? Um, examining yourself in the light of the scriptures every single day, it's a good way to do it. And if you neglect that, 
and of our of the Church of the Living God. Oh, 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 he has ways. He has ways. Therefore, judge nothing before the, for the time. Now, he's not saying not to judge people's fruits, okay? My goodness. Oh, excuse me. His goodness. Thank you for that rebuke again. His goodness. Oh, my. There we go. Those of you who know what I'm talking about. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Did I read a little bit more than we know? And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. From thus thou art, unto thus thou art, uh, from dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. Why be ye afraid of a man who will die? How can ye believe those who seek honor one from another? And let's read that again. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? You did it yourself? Or did God do it? 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 6. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. All I have to say to this is, look at the modern Ruckmanites. That's all I got to say about that. For as much as ye are manifest as for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who, ha who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, and I explained this in the previous video, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in, engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which was done, which glory was done away, let's read verse 8. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Now, this is not talking about you not reading the scriptures. The, the, letter, uh, the, the letter killeth 
the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, it's supposed to kill your self-righteousness so you know that you can't save yourself and that at your best state you cannot please God. Okay, that's what that's talking about. I explained this in a previous video. Okay? You want to see something else? Go to Ezra. Ezra. I shared this with my wife while we were out taking, uh, taking Zena out. Uh, this was something that the Lord uh, also showed on to me today. Ezra, chapter 8, verses 21 on to verse 23. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. Forsake him by seeking unto men, not the Lord. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 27 on to verse 28. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the capital S spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And uh, Psalm 77. Psalm 77. What does God think of you? What does God think of you? I cried unto my God with my voice, and even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Examining yourself. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Can he forget you when you are engraven upon the palms of his hands? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercy? Selah. When the Lord is chastening you, it goes on forever, it seems, doesn't it? And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. What are the years of the right hand of the Most High? What we see in the Gospel accounts of our Lord Jesus Christ, His public ministry. Remember the year, what does that say? But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Sitting on the right hand of God. Like it says in the book of Acts, chapter 7. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy works of old. Remember what the Lord did on the cross for you. Over 2,000 years ago. Do you remember from whence you came?
praise the Lord that he helped us, that he helped me to remember from whence we came. Because so many people out there can be getting puffed up so quickly. You got to remember from whence you came. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy goings. Meditate on all thy work, what he has done for us at the cross, how he has made us a new creature. And what does that say? And talk of thy doings. See, when you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature, you know, in Christ Jesus, God lives in you, circumcision made without hands. Um, what does that say? And talk of all thy doings. My wife and I talk about scriptural things constantly. When you're out there amongst the lost, it just comes out, doesn't it? Yeah. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph Shelah. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world, and the earth, the earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Great waters. Remember in the book of Revelation? In the book of Revelation, uh, the the waters that the whore Roman Catholicism sits upon are people. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Also, verse 19 is referring on to the parting of the Red Sea, and they walked uh, on dry shod land. Okay, that's also a reference to that. Look in the margin of the scriptures that you got if they have the center column. I bet you they have a reference for that. And of course, verse 20 proves it. Thou lettest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. What does God think of you? What God thinks of you is far more important. It's far more important. Where did we leave off? <laughs> Where were you in 1 Corinthians chapter 4? Yes. Yes. We, we already read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 is where we left off, isn't it? Yes. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Yes. Yes. Who also hath made us able ministers of the new time. Uh, okay. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 3. Let's pick up where I have verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, which is why we took that little rabbit trail to look in Ezra. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Second Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Let such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves 
by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You do remember that the word imitate does not appear in Scripture? That you are to walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on your own, with Him and you alone? Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 12. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. John. John chapter 21. John chapter 21, verses 18 on to verse 22. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when, there, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, uh, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. What is that? What is he saying? But who cares what I got going on with him? It's between you and me, buddy. I know we, we want to get along with everybody of the Church of Living God. Unfortunately, because we are in the flesh and the spirit and flesh war against each other unfortunately that's not going to happen okay that's not going to happen and you know what there are brethren out there who don't like each other but they're brethren there are people who um, I don't really care for myself but if they came to me Brad I need your prayers Brad can you help me I would why? Because they're my brother. I know that's difficult for a lot of you to get. But when you value what man thinks of you more so than what God thinks of you, that, that's a problem. Especially when you ask such as given on to you it's a trap. That is disheartening. That is disheartening. Hmm. I saw that right away. And it's like, really? Really? Wow. So. 
And also, too, keep this in mind with what you are going to begin to face out there. Like, what was it? Yesterday, my wife and I, we went to the Aldi. Um, apparently, you had to wear one of them to go in there. We didn't notice. You know, everybody else was pretty much wearing. There were a couple who weren't. But we just, you know, walked right in there. We didn't know. Nobody said anything, of course. Why? Because we, we don't care what man thinks. My wife and I care what the Lord thinks. The Lord will rebuke you through men. Yes, He will. Sure helps if you can trust those men. Isn't it? Brethren, people. You know... You know... What's... You know what's coming? Have you noticed at the grocery stores there are certain items that are not being restocked? More on that in another video. More on that later. Have you noticed that certain things are starting to dwindle away? Have you noticed that the uh -huh. are coming back? But yet, <laughs> Kamala Harris and her uh, Jesuit government uh, hasn't said anything about it yet? Yet? Do we have time for this? I'm old. My name is Brad, not Karen. We have bigger things to concentrate on. And when those are out there who like to look at everything under a magnifying glass and to find every single kink in every single solitary person's armor there is. That's a problem. And I do so hope that gets rectified. I really do. I really do. I really do. Because we need to put this stuff behind us. Not bringing up things that happened in February. Not bringing that stuff up, but put this stuff and let's press forward. Okay? Please consider these things, people. Because it's going to be far more important. It is far more important, what am I saying, of course. But with what's coming, it's going to be a little bit more important than what God thinks of you. Okay? Thank you, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, my wife, your sister, is, um, is going day by day. Thank you for your prayers. And please continue to pray for your sister, my wife. Please continue to pray for our brethren, the Church of the Living God in Australia. Wow. Remember to pray for the babes in Christ. Because a babe, especially when they get messed up with one of these Christians, pray for the babes in Christ. And thank you. Praise the Lord for every single one of you who has prayed, who has helped, who has encouraged, who has rebuked. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. See you in the next video.